You asked me a question, and I told you I would get the answer in this broadcast. You asked me the question, if my wife and I had a Lifetime movie named after us in our life, what would we name it? None of us could think of a name. But while you were talking, and I hope I'm talking to somebody today, this would be the title of the movie. It's not over. Mm. It's not over. It's not, I don't care where you are right now. Yeah. I don't care if you had a divorce. Right. I don't care where you are. It's not over. Mm. Right. The marriage isn't over. God is not through with you. You still have purpose. You still have an assignment. That's we'll right. give you the discount. We'll we'll do all of that stuff. But I I believe so much in what God has given us Absolutely. that I'm here to tell you it's not over. Absolutely. The only way you know it's not over is because of information. Right. Most of us don't have information problems. Mm. We got an execution problem. I never imagined my public healing would inspire others to heal across the world. I thank you for using him to reach the world with the message of hope in relationships. But your life does not. God, you are my publicist. We laugh. <laughs> we share the unadulterated truth. He said, not only have I not divorced you, I ain't exposed you. Oh. We didn't marry fans, we married forever. And we wanted forever to act like a fan. Reveal her, Jesus. I will not compromise mm -mm. on getting a woman of God. You don't have to. And Father, I declare for his future wifey, thank you for preserving her. This season, I declare miracles and manifestations. See, you selling scripts. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You being true to who you are, you're going to attract. Mm. It's a Hebrew word, hail, and it was translated wealth. And it means people. It means men. It means resources. And it means means. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield, and this is the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Lateris R. Whitfield. Man, listen, are you still shacking up with us? This is the last episode of season six miracles and manifestation it seems like it's a miracle to get y'all to, <laughs> to get y'all to subscribe so listen i want y'all to hit that subscription button and subscribe make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes if you're listening to us on apple Podcasts or any of the streaming platforms and if it allows you leave a review uh, that's how we begin to trend on those platforms so listen thank y'all so much for rocking with us during season six you know, I always end the season with people that I believe are just uh, assigned by God to just leave a great uh, deposit into your lives. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My homies, Don and Faith Johnson. How y'all doing? We are good. I'm doing good. I'm well, doing good. No pressure. No pressure no at pressure, all. No pressure. No pressure, no pressure at all. No, I mean, no, just a little bit, maybe, no but pressure. no pressure. No Listen, y'all going, y'all going, y'all. Uh, I know a lot of y'all recognize Don. Y'all have seen him on a lot of my lives on IG. And so y'all been like, get him, get him. And so um, we're we, we going to make it do what it do. Hey, but before we get started, we're doing a healing retreat November the 9th through the 12th in Los Cabos. Make sure that you uh, reserve your room because it's about to close very soon. Uh, so make sure you res uh, reserve your room. Um, I'm curating this with my boy Bashe uh, Williams. He's going to be the psychotherapist. And I got Jess Caridi. Jess yeah. Caridi is going to be joining oh, yeah. us uh, for a great worship experience because as we talk about the soul, it has to deal with our relationship with God. So we're going to curate this beautiful worship experience. So listen, y'all don't want to miss this. Make sure you reserve your spot. I have an exciting announcement. Friday, July the 14th, Stellar Talks presents Dear Future Wifey Podcast, Faith and Love at the Stellar Awards in Las Vegas. Join us. There will be a link in the bio for more information. That's major. God, yeah. God doing some stuff, major, ain't that? Ma that Listen. is major. Listen, Don, when they That's reached out major. to me and said, hey, we want your name came up and we want to have you do the uh, Stellars, I was like... I said, God, you, you're you amazing. You're you're my publicist. It's, it's funny you say that when you say your name came up. that That's prophetic all by itself. Mm -hmm. Talk again, about it. That, that, mm -hmm. that's, David doesn't fight Goliath until his name comes up. See, see, you see what I'm talking yeah, about? No. You see what I'm talking about? All right. He does Already. We, we, we right. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say, I don't want to over-spiritualize it, but it's truth because you said your name came up. David's name doesn't come up. The Bible says Saul asked for somebody. Somebody said there's a guy named David. His name comes up in the room. Your name comes up in the room. Him confronting Goliath is simply a platform for his next. Mm -hmm. 
That that's all it is. And some people don't realize that healing retreat you're talking about, yeah. your name coming up, that's your platform for next. Right. So whether it's your marriage, your relationship, you're broken, God says, get healed so I can put your name in a room so you can be next. <laughs> see, I don't know. Do you see, Phaedra? Here we go. Does he do this when you say, hey, what you want to eat right now? I want some Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well, see the way the Lord works with Kentucky Fried right? Chicken. Does he, does, does he do that? All the time. Everything becomes a sermon. All the time. Man, my but goodness. Okay. How, did, how, how did y'all meet, Phaedra? Oh, my God. Woo. <laughs> Jesus. Ninth grade. Ninth grade. Y'all go way back then. Me, like, ninth really, really grade. Yeah, ninth ninth grade. grade. <laughs> the Bible does talk about repenting. So no, no, no. <laughs> you better tell the truth today. <laughs> we were actually on grade? a field trip. Okay. Rivalry schools. Right? Two different schools. They should have never put us together. But it was a shortage. No school had the total amount of students to go, so they right. had to put us together on the Amtrak train. On the Amtrak train. And took us to Washington D.C. <laughs> But now here's what's crazy now. Now this to me this is the best part. We didn't know each other. Didn't mm -hmm. we? We clowned, of course. Yeah. We, we middle school clowning around. He kept trying to sit. Also, next you knew in middle school. No, actually, I'm sorry. It was junior high it was then. Junior high yeah, then. I'm telling you, yeah. it's junior Ooh. high. Yeah. I'm only 25, so it was oh, you're 25. It was middle yeah. school. <laughs> it's middle school now. <laughs> it's middle school. But there's a there's a monument in Washington D.C. called mm -hmm. the Awakening. So in the Awakening, it's Jesus coming out of the ground. Right. His hand is in the ground. I'm not lying. In the ninth grade, ninth grade, we took a picture together in that hand. Never dated, never knew each other. Why did I take a picture? I just want to take a picture with her. I was like, hey, come take a picture with me. He was chasing this. me at the beginning. You didn't believe me, see? <laughs> no, I felt God. <laughs> In the ninth grade, I felt you God. You felt an awakening. I right, felt an did, awakening. Are you sure that wasn't hormones? You sure that wasn't hormones? Sure that, wasn't hormones? that was awakening. Awakening. <laughs> <laughs> and see, I got my life together, and she was doing wrong things, so I had to no, wait until. we were telling the truth. Lift your hands. You brought her to the Lord. Yeah. You brought her to the Lord. I had to bring her to the Lord. Right. Hey, Lord. No, right. no. It's opposite day, apparently. It's opposite day. <laughs> and so y'all met in the ninth grade, but y'all just, that was just a quick little photo op. Nothing That's more. It. You didn't get the phone My numbers mom was actually over the field trip for our school, right. and I kept saying, "You can't sit by me." Yep. This is, and and, and are after, you trying to sit by? Yeah. Yes. After that event, never saw each other again never. till our freshman year of college. Isn't that crazy? So Living in the same numbers. city. Nothing. No. No Why phone numbers. No. I couldn't give my phone. I don't know. She out. was a little too slow for me. <laughs> Way too yeah, fast. She was too for slow me. for me. <laughs> She was too slow. Way too fast. Yeah, I need, I, need a, I need a yes faster. <laughs> yeah. uh -uh. I'm going to give you and a And I'm not talking about a church yes no. either. <laughs> For all you church people, I'm not talking about it's the church, church right, yes. Right. Mm -mm. And so y'all met in college. What happened? It's funny because the day we checked in, we looked at each other at the counter. Like, like, I know, I know you. you. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I know you. And it, it kind of went from there. And there was still no. So the group of friends I had, Operated in one vein. The group of friends she had operated in another vein. What veins was those, uh, old Don? Um, I went to class. <laughs> I was on the honor roll. I was a cheerleader. I pledged. I was on a roll. <laughs> he was on a roll. <laughs> on a roll of what, Don? Hey, hey, I told people this. You know, you have mega, mega cum laude, summa cum laude. Yeah. I graduated. Thank you, Lottie. <laughs> For um, sure. <laughs> I was on a six year program. <laughs> I didn't do the four year program. <laughs> you wasn't yeah. you wasn't in the uh in, in college for education. No, no, no I'm, mm -mm. I'm for a certain type of education. <laughs> so, mm -mm. Yeah, so we dealt with other things. He, he minded this, in now, sex education. Just before God right. came. He oh, minded in sex education. Sex That's education, what drug yeah. education. Yeah, you, I don't know what else I can say on this podcast. Nah, 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 you did drugs. <laughs> what were you doing, Don? Is this thing on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, listen, I am, I, as God is my witness, I am the billboard to God has a sense of humor. Really? Because yeah. there is no way I could have done all the stuff I did and be where I am right now. Like, there is no, you this can't convince true. me what true. we smoked, what we drunk, things we did. There is no way you could convince me. My friends that are probably watching this now from college, it's like, oh, you better not tell them. You better not. For years, when <laughs> years. we would go back to college oh, yeah. to the games, they would look and say, first of all, how did you all get together? For real? Second of all, there is a God. Like, like why if Don Johnson is God, safe, I am there the is a billboard. God. Uh, yeah, yeah nah, the turnaround. Now nah, he was wilding out. Oh my what? God. And that's a compliment. You name it, we did it. Like, I'm not. Like, you said six years. Six years mm -hmm. of complete. Now, watch this. I'm going to mess somebody up. Of utter fun. <laughs> of utter fun. If anybody tell you sin wasn't fun, they are lying. The they are straight lying. Because that was six years of, oh my God. Can the rest of my life stay like this? <laughs> 
I'm not, oh, it was a mess. Oh, yeah, it was a mess. But we did it and... And By so, the grace of God. And so she graduated before you, and then you were still in Absolutely. school? Absolutely. Yeah, I was doing it at school. four, and... He was still there two more years. Yeah, I, I was on the extended program. Yeah, I had the extended program. She had the accelerated program. So y'all went to the school in y'all same city? Yeah, Bethune Cookman no, University. Oh, Bethune. Yeah, Wildcats. It was, it was Bethune Cookman College back then, back though. Then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so y'all went to school, and y'all still maintain y'all relationship. How long did it take y'all to take it from uh, boyfriend and girlfriend to... Well, we didn't start off at that. Y'all did? <laughs> we were a couple. She used me. She I used would me. Say I he's used my couple person. She used me. She right. used you as a plus one? J that's all. So we had See? some friends. So we, we had some it. friends. <laughs> Shout out to a friend. Her her friend is the only reason why we really started dating. True. So I, I played a little bit of basketball. So her friends would talk her into come and see mm -hmm. me. Play basketball. I was so like, she I was don't like, like him. so they would go, go to Universal Studios. Like we went to Universal Studios probably every weekend. We really? Yeah. Every weekend. That was kind of like a date thing. Yeah. So eventually, I started paying for it. You say eventually? I, mm -hmm. I'm like, why well, I keep paying for this every weekend? So I was like, okay, what are we doing here? Like, can we be? She said, well, I'm just gonna call you my couple buddy. This is what is a couple person. buddy? She played you. Huh? Like, what? That's supposed to be your line. <laughs> she, she, that's supposed to be your line. She done took your what, line. What is a couple buddy? <laughs> So there's no church, there's no anything. <laughs> and I man, it it took well, it was a few months before yeah. it was like, you know what? I think I want to just settle down. I think I wanna just I think she lured me in. Uh. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna get now. Remember okay. now, I don't know Jesus, I don't yeah. know church, uh -uh. I don't know anything. I'm just uh -uh. living my life. And for whatever oh, reason, I think I must have had a dream of something. I asked you one day about what love looks like. Mm -hmm. Like what does that? Because my expression of love was totally <laughs> jacked yeah. up. I thought, get all you can, can yeah. all you get. Smash them all, get, yeah. you know, whatever. And then it was like, okay, I need you, what does love look like to you? And then we had that discussion, it was like, okay, you know what? I think um, I might settle down a little bit. Now, it still was crazy, but mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> still did some stupid stuff, but. Yeah. So what made you at the very beginning and play them like that to say you'll be my did couple buddy? Yeah, that? you played them. You yeah, call it what it is. Yeah, I you mean, you're gonna yeah. be my couple buddy. Like yeah. what? Yeah, call it what to it is. To be honest, I was so independent. I was probably too independent, right? So I had my own house, my own car, my own. You know, just down the list. I didn't need anything age, from you. She had a home. My yeah. Own beforehand. You talking about right when you graduated college? You I'm just talking about in college. In college, you had your own place, my all this stuff. My own car, my own money. You oh, was working in college? Oh, she's an alpha. Yeah. Oh, she's an alpha. Oh, oh yeah. she is a And so I would tell him, like, the only thing I need from you is sex. That's if I want it. So park I right there for a minute. <laughs> just... Park, just park right there for a minute. She said, the only thing I need you for, and she's not lying. <laughs> I need you to understand. It's like, the only thing I need from you. I just want to be clear. You know? how, why are you, how are you handling? That's, that's some new age type of stuff. That's, the, that's how women operate now. You tell me back then you were, you were handling him like that. Where'd that come from? Did your parents, did you see your mom do that? My mom was a single mom. And so I saw independence yeah. for a long time. <laughs> so said, I left I the house knowing I had to be strong. I know what I saw that I did not want. Right? What did you not want? Someone that was going to be controlling over me because they could. Yeah. Now, if you have a vision and we're going to come together and build, that's fine. But just because you can? Mm -mm. And see, that, that was, her, that was mm. something I didn't recognize back then that I recognize now to say, okay, mm -hmm. you know what? That was really protection for her. Yes. So she was protecting herself, right. saying, okay, this is the only void I think I have mm -hmm. that you because can, you can't mm -hmm. feel anything else. And yeah. my immature state saying, okay, I don't have anything else to give but that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we went through that whole tit for tat and yeah. for years, for, for years, for a while. She told me, that's all I need from you. Yeah. Like, that's it. That's And I was like, okay, you can have it. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that, he's like, well, that was easy. That was <laughs> it came to understanding. What else? <laughs> There's no standing like an understanding. <laughs> We're good. Like, all right, that's what you want from me. <laughs> so when did this shift to a heart space? Ooh. When did it go Probably. from transactional to, I'm going to say, heart actionable? How did it go from and that you know, to your at heart? At first, I want to say it wasn't transactional because I wanted him to continue to chase me so I didn't give in easily. So right. how long were you planning on him chasing you? Chasing you since it was ninth a minute. Grade. He told my mom, like, this is the hardest chase I've ever had. Yeah, told us, I'm not doing this no more. Yeah. Like, we, what are we doing here? Yeah. Like, what are we 
Well, I'm not saying a marathon. I'm used to hundred yard dashes. Yeah, and if you're gonna take me out to eat, you're gonna take me and my friends. I'm not going with you by myself. It you was do just that. A whole, you do it. She did it. It was a whole. You would do it. She did it. My first date, I paid for her and her friends. She did. I was like, I don't know what you're I gonna mean, do to me. Die. I mean, you're not gonna like, take me out somewhere. And but, no. But, but now watch this. The arrogance of me and the pride of me because the money I had, I'm gonna show off all of y'all. Mm -hmm. Just arrogant. Well, you doing making money back then. So moving on. Um, <laughs> just. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Moving on. Got a couple uh, of businesses, so but you, you know, get, we got to leave that all. Here's our No, 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 no. We kept that separate no. now. We kept that separate. <laughs> For everybody that's watching, right. no stems, no seeds. Okay, so listen. <laughs> I can revert back. Hey, I told the church one day, I said, listen, if y'all knew my real testimony, half of y'all wouldn't even join right, the church. Right. And then one day I looked around the church, we got hundreds and hundreds of people. I said, wait a minute, all y'all like me. <laughs> <laughs> they fell out laughing. <laughs> yes, pastor. <laughs> said, y'all like me. Y'all like me. <laughs> like, yes, yeah, so... Uh, we had That's different. Why flex. You said, I'm a fake. He said, "Ain't no big deal. I pay yeah, for all y'all food." We had different services uh, <laughs> available during that time. Mm. Um, I was mm. diversifying my portfolio. Mm. Uh, Let's go. <laughs> mm -hmm. She said, "You gonna take me and my friends out Absolutely. to eat?" You're like, hey, no. "All right, cool. That's fine." That and you me. know, even in watching him chase me, I watched his mannerism, so <laughs> I knew that crazy. <laughs> If you buy like if you buy somebody a whopper like that, that's what that's what made them happy. Like they willing to give it all because you, you took them to Burger so King. Wrong like right I, now, like, I'm not you down are for that. So wrong. I can buy my own whopper. Like that's all it takes, you know. But um, we wouldn't. She wouldn't let me take it to no fast foods. We weren't doing any of that mm. stuff. I was like the arrogance of you. Mm. Oh, you wouldn't let them do that for real? No. But at that time, it was no longer chase. Then it was competition. So yes. I'm, I'm competitive by nature. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So at that, at that time, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get you. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to get yeah, you. Yeah. At that time, I'm like, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, judge me later. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get that. Yeah. <laughs> That's that real, bad. though. But so, so when did it switch? He's talking I, to your mom, telling your mom, hey, yeah. listen, you know, she's making me work too hard. At that time, what were you, you wanted to marry her? No. So what were you talking talk to your mom about? So her her mother to me was a guiding light. He thinks it's his mom. Like my, my mother, mm -hmm. I love my mother to death. Mm -hmm. Like my mom is my rock. Yeah. But there was, a, there was a spiritual aspect of me that I had never been introduced to. Right. It's like my mother taught me, my mother and my father taught me how to live life. The world, what you're gonna fight, you're gonna do this. But her mother would show me like there's spiritual things about you that you don't know. Also, oh, so your mom's a strong believer. Absolutely. Oh my God. I'm talking about we'll praise her. How, as a matter of fact, she's the head of my evangelistic um, team. Like, we'll tear the house down Absolutely. with prayer. And she was with, like that when y'all were in college. Absolutely. I'm gonna tell you a funny joke. She don't like it, but I don't care. Uh, this woman here likes short, bright skin with curly hair. Yeah. Did that's what she was going to marry. Why are you saying yeah? Yeah. <laughs> that's what back, she back in that day, that's yeah, what that's, she was red everybody, bone. Everybody, everybody was all on that. She was on the red bone. I'm tall, dark, sick. Walk, walked in the house. Her mama said, that's your husband right there. No, that ain't. That ain't my. Could not that, be me. Maybe it's one of my <laughs> other sisters. She because. said, that's your husband right there. But she she showed me something. She said that at what stage? The first time oh, she was, met oh, you? Was the first yeah. time she met me. The very first time, so this scared the fool out of me. Like, wait, hold. So you like twenty what? Twenty one? I'm in twenty. No, this was ninety and ninety five. This was four ninety five. This was ninety four. Ninety four going into ninety five. Ninety four. So I'm like, I was like twenty one. I, I, I might have know. been twenty I don't know, twenty. I'm still twenty five today. So I don't know. <laughs> but it was my early, my early twenties coming out of my teens. Now I was early twenty. So she said, she said this to me. Now here's what it changed for me. God, God's honest you. I was going through something in my life. And I had just gotten out of prison, mm -hmm. just left jail. And she sat me in the kitchen and she said something to me and it changed my life. She said, now you're going to have a choice to make about mm -hmm. your life. Either you're going to go back to the life you've been living or you're going to move forward and fight for what's ahead of you. First, this will open my heart for her. If her mother loves me like this and she don't know me, mm -hmm. how much more could she love me and she can get to know me more? Yeah. So I think if the mother is, and here's what I would say to some people. You can only become most of the time what you see modeled in front of you. Yes. Right. And I thought if this is modeled in front of her, oh my God, what's the potential that she has in her? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not even being spiritual at that time. I'm just thinking, if she's a reflection of her mother, 
If her mother can say something and love me out of my mess, this woman has the potential to love me out of my mess and love me to a greater man. Right. So you tell me, why wouldn't her mom tell her to steer, steer away from you? No, she didn't. That's what I'm saying. Why didn't she? If, if you sitting up here going to prison, what are you going to jail for? <laughs> when she okay, said look, Is my it, phone ringing? <laughs> right. Is my phone when ringing? When she said <laughs> that, it's like I saw him and he's tall and he's dark. And, you know, and she's explaining all this and I'm thinking, that can't be right. Like... <laughs> The only thing literally I can say is God had to have shown that to her. That's the only thing I can think of. I mean, at this point, I'm getting ready to graduate soon and I'm, I'm going on with life. It's like, like I'm literally still in school. You know, whatever you want to do. But Graduation is nowhere in sight. Right. <laughs> like, OK, I need to go back to school to try to do something. And graduation is nowhere in sight. But, man, it, it turned on something in me. You know how sometimes you can. Then we go making sermons again. But that Elizabeth Mary moment, that's that something leaps on the inside, yes. that connection. Yeah. And it was like, whoa. So my connection is just to her. My connection is to her family. Yes. And we laugh and talk about it now to say, Mama, isn't it funny that you were help raising your pastor? And so I, I passed all she of them now. Loves him to death. Yeah, I passed all of them. The, the entire family, the friends, I, all of them members of the church. But it was funny at that time that sometimes people give up on you too soon. Right. And they don't know what you're going to become right. because they're so in love with who you are. Never take time to figure out who you're going to become. Right. So that's relationship. That's partnership. That's whatever it is. Yeah. Don't ever give up on where you are now. Because as we're going through that, remember, I'm early 20s. I, I was going to say, yeah. this is years before he even this became a years. pastor. Like, there's this no is thought. Years. This is But just to think back, even now having this conversation, to watch her labor with you all that yeah, time. Years. He would literally come. To, he would go to work. Go play basketball. Go home to his house with his parents. And then come shower. House. Come to our house. Yep. Eat dinner. Stay. And him and mom float. have a coke float every night. Then he goes back home, and it's the same thing every, every day. day. That was every day. Every day, and she's like pouring into him scripture. <laughs> she told him one day, "If you want to date my daughter, you got to go to church with us. Then you can come to the house and eat dinner." And, and that's said, what got oh, me. Oh, I can come oh, to I can eat eat? dinner. And she cooked. Oh. Like oh, Sunday dinners every day. Oh, she cooks. <laughs> he said Sunday dinner so, every day. Absolutely. And she cooks. So to all you mm-hmm. rich women that don't want to cook, mm-hmm. did, she cooked. Mm-hmm. She cooked. Sometimes that seems to be a lost art. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Cooking. Yeah. That I'm, I'm not, go get your bag, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Right. And again, I'm going to help you cook. Right. So I ain't just going to sit there and watch you. I'm going to help. But she, she cooked and she was feeding me naturally and spiritually right. for the man that I was going to become. Mm-hmm. So I spent time with her mother just to like, just sit there, mm-hmm. like sitting at the feet, like, okay, say what now? Say, well, she made me mad sometime too. It's kind of like, ah, <laughs> I ain't coming no more. See y'all later, all y'all. And find then myself the next right back, day, yeah. find myself right back there again, <laughs> not knowing that God was working on the plan, not knowing, mm-hmm. like I said, none of this, where I am now, what I do now, none of this was in, I say none of this was, none of this what was What made you people. open to it? Mm-hmm. I had done so much in my life Remember, you was having fun. I was okay. A lot. Of yeah. So I told so the late Bishop C D Kinsey, uh, Church of God in Christ, Cathedral of Faith, Church of God in Christ. He called me one day from the back of the church. I told somebody, that man don't know me. He said, No, Bishop went to. I said, Man, that man don't know me. So he asked me one day. He said, uh, Are you gonna live for God? I mean, just out of the blue. I'm like, Man, this is a crazy question. I said, This is what I'm gonna do, Bishop. I said, I gave the devil the first twenty something years of my life. I'm gonna give God the next twenty. Whoever treated me the best, they're going to get the last of it. That's what he said. I, that's what I told him. I told him. I told him. He fell out laughing. He fell out. Because I had a good time when I wasn't saved. Like, I'm not. Man, y'all see, you told me to be real. Man, I had I had a great so time. I, I said, now I'm going to give God the same amount of time I gave the devil. And whoever treated me the best, that's going to get the last half of my life. Boy, he fell out laughing. <laughs> But when, but when I'm committed, when I'm loyal, oh, I'm loyal. Yeah. Like I'm friendship. My my brother, my oh, friend, tell God. me, yeah, I'm loyal. I, oh, I, and, and I meant it too. Like you did. I'm with you. So what was the mom saying that kept drawing you back every day? You're gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. I know you're frustrated. I'm telling you, God's gonna use you. She would tell me all the time, God gonna use you. I don't think God gonna use me. God gonna use you. When is He gonna use me? I don't need Him to use me. I just need some money. <laughs> I just need some money. I need, I need some help. <laughs> Since you always tell me that. That church colloquialism. Mm-hmm. But she was rooted enough. And then what? <laughs> I know she, she probably laughing right now. So then she started putting me around other people. Mm-hmm. 
that was like-minded like me. Mm-hmm. And then now when she wouldn't get me, then they would get me. And then she wouldn't get me. And then one day Bishop said, hey, I want you to come ride with me one day. We went to Leesburg, Florida. Leesburg, Cause I want you to ride me to Leesburg. I don't even know what Leesburg is. What is a Leesburg? Leesburg. Um, I'm crazy enough. I just got in the car with him. But I was doing all of this because I didn't want to get in trouble again. I didn't want to do the alternative. I said, okay, listen, I've lived that. What can I do different to not to go back to that? And that's what I want to talk about. Because you said you had so much fun. Oof. But how fun was it when you were running away from the very thing that you were having so much fun doing? Mm-hmm. Honestly, I had a dream that I had died in that dream. There it is. I had a dream. And the Lord said, if you keep making that choice, this is what's going to happen to you. And I was like, okay, so I have a decision to make. I still remember the car to make the model where we were. And that's just how vivid it was. I said, okay, I got a choice to make. And I told him, I was like, God, and I said, I'm going to live for you, but I'm not going to do all that other stuff. What's and other I, stuff? All that speaking in <laughs> tongues and all that other kind of stuff. Man, I'm not doing that. I'm not, yeah, I'm not doing all that. Now, I'm, me and you cool. Yep. We cool, mm-hmm. but don't make me like that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Like, I don't, that's too eccentric. That's too, like, I, you, you see y'all that, like, I used to joke. Oh, yeah, we all did. People. We I used to clown, did. like, what, we what all are y'all did. doing? Man, I, I used to clown the people. And I was like, just don't make me do that. And uh, he got me. Yeah, he, he got me. <laughs> yep, he, he got me. So you got filled. You got filled right? with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. At what age? <laughs> you, I'm. That was twenty six. Yeah. I must have been 20, 25, 26. 25. I remember to this day. Mm-hmm. Bishop Willie James Campbell was doing a revival, mm-hmm. and they taught me in the going because she was, she was gonna cook afterwards. <laughs> See, so that food like, always okay, gets you. That food gets you, boy. <laughs> It's somebody, a woman, that, boy, that fool gets you. I'm going to cook out. All right, I'm coming. And, I'm I was sitting, and I was sitting in the church. And I said, I said, ooh. Now, I said, I want to make sure nobody saw me. I was like, uh, you know how you sit on your hands like that means something? I was sitting there like, don't do it again. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. Boy, if I'd had a phone, I'd have got on Instagram. I was like, don't, don't do it again. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. I said, oh. I said, I got to use the restroom. <laughs> I was like, can't do this? Like, what's going on? You ever something scared you? Like, no. No, because then I'm like, you becoming one of them. You can't do that. <laughs> See, I'm just telling you all my immature thoughts. You said you becoming one of them. You becoming one of them. You was transforming into one of them. Right? No, you can't do that. But see, here's the reason why I say that, though. Because to me, sometimes you can be so spiritually minded, you're no earthly good. Facts. And I ran across too many. And you didn't want to lose so, that balance. Yeah. Like, I didn't want to lose myself and become something that I can't reach people. Yeah. Or you become so ostracized and isolated that now it's like, you man, you're no good. Like, so I you went, just gone. And so you went to the bathroom and what happened? Yeah, I came back and sat down and did it again. Yeah, and then I, there was a young lady, another older, my mother's best friend, mm-hmm. Sarah Rose. I said, what does it mean? She just fell out laughing when I told her. <laughs> Like, I'm like, yo, you laughing. I'm dead serious. Like, what did I just do? Like, what is that? And um, it was it was an eye-opening thing. And I heard the Lord say, I just wanted to show you the potential of what's in you. But now here's a kicker. It didn't come back again until like three years later. And it grieved me because I felt bad. Like, did I quench it? Did I make it stop? Did I? And uh, God said, no, I was just giving you a trailer of what's the potential of in you. If you stick with me. Mm. And I didn't understand that power of what comes with it. And then after that, I think I went on this whole hunger thing then. Now that's she'll tell you this. Now this one I got real bad. Oh, I started buying books, Matthew Henry, Zorda Vans. I was reading everything, Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, because mm. I wanted to know. He created a hunger in me, like, oh, what is this? And then God says, I want you to chase me just like you was chasing her. Mm. Oh. <laughs> he said, because if you think, watch it, because if you think she's gonna make you feel better. Imagine what I'm gonna do for you, and I just started. I started. I just dove into the like I was. I would write scriptures down. I took the entire First Samuel and wrote it in yeah. my own words. Yeah, I read it, then wrote it how I interpreted it. Like I, it was, yeah, it, the, it was, whole, the whole, the whole, I book. the whole book. Mm-hmm. I wrote the whole book. I wrote, I wrote the whole book because I wanted to feel that love. Right. I wanted that type of love, and I think I know. I don't think I know. That's why. That's one of the things that my wife and I are really here on is relationship because love is the foundation it of is. everything. So let's unpack that. Un- unpack that. You said the book of Samuel. What did that reveal to you about love? Well, when you open up Samuel, 
there's a problem in the church. They're going to shallow. Now, you asked me to do this. So I'm going to do it. Well, come on. <laughs> and there's a fight between two women. Hannah said, Hannah and Benina, they got a problem with each other. One can produce and one can't. Mm -hmm. But all of them going to the church. Hannah says, I got a problem. The other one says, yeah, you do got a problem. Mm -hmm. One can produce. The other one can't produce. The other one says, listen, God, if you give me one child, mm -hmm. I'll give him back to you. This is my problem. They both are in the church. The woman that has the most pain, the church thinks she's drunk. Right. Something wrong with you. You drunk. She said, I'm not drunk. I'm asking God to do something for me. Mm -hmm. And it was at that stage I started realizing that there's so much happening in the church. If we don't discern it, we'll run people away. So I just started writing. And then I wrote, okay, so what? She had a son. Okay, so she left him there. She left him there for how long? Mm -hmm. How long did she leave him there? Why did she leave him there? Which says to me, how do we manage abandonment? Mm -hmm. So now there's a mother that left a child mm -hmm. for ministry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That child probably feels some sense of abandonment. Right. Facts. Right. Why don't mom? So if the church doesn't handle abandonment right, right, now we have a whole nother issue. Abandonment for ministry? Yeah. How many preachers' kids <laughs> yep. feel abandoned for ministry? Uh, uh, yep. so you, you see what I mean? Yeah. So I feel a call in ministry and one person don't. So all of this is abandonment, left alone, to be weaned, to be taught. Why is God? And then you talk about the arrogance of a man. Am I not better to you right. than any? Wait, what are you talking about? Yeah. Your arrogance? So then you can talk about Samuel and Samuel misguidance and how Samuel thinks he's doing everything. God, Learning to hear God. Watch the generation. So now Samuel says, hey, you keep calling me. He says, yes, man, I'm not calling mm -hmm. you. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not calling. He says, I tell you what. If you hear it again, say, God, here am I. Which says to me, the younger generation needs the older generation. Mm -hmm. To teach us how to hear God. Yes. So if we're not careful, we'll talk about the old school, not understanding. We need them to mm -hmm. teach us how to hear God. Mm -hmm. But the old school needs us, the younger ones, 25 years old. Thank you. <laughs> we need the, the the viber, the the let's go get it. The, right. You need that to go get people. And if we're not careful, we become separated. And now we got a divided church in the church. And we got to divide it. People in the people, divide it. Relationships, divide it. it. It baffles me how we can be in church and not still love each other, talk to each other. Mm -hmm. That that's crazy to me. Just like in a marriage. Yeah, it, and it's it's the same. So mm -hmm. so that kind of started my whole love journey. But she was always that's always been her thing. But y'all wasn't during that time. Were y'all together? Yep. Were y'all married at that point? Yep. Yes. So y'all got married at how long were y'all dating? Well, what? what Put it like this, at 26, when you felt the, the drawing of the Holy yeah. Spirit, you were already married. Mm -hmm. Okay, so y'all got married at what age? How were you? Not going to tell you. <laughs> well, but she, I know, she'd probably say three. 23? Yeah. Uh, she was three years old. How old were you? was 22. 22, 23? 22. So, 28, so you got married, you still in college. Just got out. He had just got out. Just got out. Mm-hmm. Got out. When I was out, maybe about, because I got my master's degree. So maybe probably... So you still got a master's even though you were struggling getting your bachelor's. That was see, no, so, and got his master's in a year and a half. That shows me that you can do it when you're not hey, clowning hey, around. Hey, okay, hey. okay, okay, okay. Go hey, ahead. Hey. It's your story. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Beep, 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 beep. No, I, no, I don't care. I don't care. He's just playing. So to me, my master's degree was my makeup. I was mad because I wasted six years, so I dove into my master's degree so hard mm -hmm. that it only took me eighteen months to get it. And I went, I went full force. At it. And I was working at the same time. Right. But I was so mad that I wasted my life. That's good. That I was like, you know what? I am not going to waste. And I learned mm -hmm. the principle. I learned the importance of time. Mm -hmm. Time is the one thing God will not give you back. Right. He'll give you money back. He'll give you relationships back. But money, I mean, but time, time is cold-blooded. Time doesn't wait on anybody. Yep. Time doesn't care who you are or what you look like. <laughs> mm. <laughs> And so as you begin to, um, how did you shift it? I want to go back to that. What made it shift from what I said was transactional? Because I don't need you for whatever for you to say, let's go ahead and take this to, to marriage. And it's not based on him. It's, I mean, from him, I want to hear from you because your heart was at a different space. You grew up with this mom that was Holy Ghost filled, tongue talking, uh, you know, moving <laughs> heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you wasn't the traditional church girl where you were like, I want to be married at this age and I want to do this. Yes, I was. Well, what happened? Why, why would you handle my boy like that? Um, 
Oh, but brother, because he wanted saying. a challenge, so let me give you a challenge. No. <laughs> I love my independent life, but I knew that I was coming close to the end where it was time to transition into adulthood, right? Because even though we're an adult in college, you know, yeah. you're really not adulting in college. But I wanted to be with somebody at some point that I, I could deal with. I was an adult. Okay. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Somebody that I could build with. And even though he was just all over the place doing God knows what, I could see that he was a builder. Right. I could see that he loved me a lot. Now, in his own little way. Yeah. With his own little verbiage. Yeah. His but, little hood way. But Right. He, he was like, he was like uh, Tyrese on, on Baby Boy. Girl, I love you. Probably going to be my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That part. That's, that's about sums it up. <laughs> and let me just buy you the world, which at that time and season of my life, that was a huge turnoff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But. Over time, especially while he was in school and I graduated. Wait a minute, and, uh, unpack that. He said it was a turn off that he was giving you that, right. that to buy so you the world. My yeah. love language was a turn off for her. That's what I was going to get to. You, you see, right? you see what I mean? Like that's, yeah. Yeah, 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 you, you love that. giving that's gifts. Good. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I'm immature, even though I'm super smart, but I'm still thinking you think that as long as you buy this, you can get whatever you want. You right. can rent me or you can yeah. purchase me. That was a no-go for me. So that's what I had in my mind. But while he was off in school and I'm home working, like my out-of-college job, a real Fortune 500 mm-hmm. job, job, I began to think about, okay, this is how he loves me. And I had a talk with my mom. I was like, he just keep buying me stuff and it gets on my nerves and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it gets on my nerves. <laughs> so she she had a talk with me. We didn't know back then to use the term that's his love language. Oh, yeah, we didn't know right. that. But right. she was able to explain to me this is how he loves you and accept that, Right. So it took me some time to begin to shift to think that that's okay because I can buy whatever I want. I don't need you to purchase that for me. But if that's how you're saying I love you, then buy me the purse or the dinner or the shoes or whatever it is. So once I begin to break that wall down and see him for who he is, like he really loves me, he probably doesn't know how to love me the way that I want to be loved because a hug for me works. He can buy me whatever designer bag, but if you write I love you on a piece of notebook paper like that has made mm-hmm. my whole day. So just beginning to see the true love that was in him begin to soften me because I had a bad image of men. Yeah. And are there any good ones? Are there any faithful ones? You know, just, I don't know. So I was happy that I had that space to just sit back and assess and look at life in a different way. She made me so mad one day. What happened? I went all out. I bought a nice, I'm talking to dress, Shoes. I said, okay. I buy this set out on the bed, put roses around it. I mean, I'm going all out. This is where y'all got married? No, this was married. Okay. okay. We just got married. And I said, and I'm going to do something stupid. I'm going to just do something stupid. I went in the restroom, pulled all the toilet tissue out, mm-hmm. pulled it all out, wrote, I love you on mm-hmm. every piece of the toilet tissue, rolled it up. Yeah. She went to screaming, oh my God. I said, I know she's screaming over that dress to this day. This toilet tissue. I said, you mean tell me I could have just bought some dog on toilet tissue? <laughs> and she got, she got sorry about the toilet tissue. She yes, care about other little stuff. She got so another sweet. stuff. I think men <laughs> need to really understand that. Now all women are like that. Yeah, that's right. But but I hate to quantify by most, but I do believe that most people desire more thoughtful gifts than more materialistic stuff. Absolutely. Not saying that they say don't buy me nothing, but if you put thought into it and put, because every woman that I know, my friends all talk about, you know, this same stuff. And they're like, yeah, he could have just wrote me a car. He could have just did, he could have did this, you know. And a lot of men, we miss that. And the reason why, unfortunately, is because the rhetoric that we hear on social media all the time is the woman wants this. She wants the mm. Christian Louboutin. She wants the Gucci. She wants the, all the name brand stuff. We hear all that. Mm-hmm. So then men adopt the ideology that we can what she feels like, buy a woman. Mm-hmm. All right, all you got to do is just trick off some money to her, buy this, get her this, whatever, mm-hmm. fly out, do all this materialistic stuff, and then you have access to her vagina. Right. Instead of saying what you really want is access to her heart Absolutely. by actually de- uh, depositing something Absolutely. with more I will tell every substance. man this, the greatest, as far as I know, again, I don't want to quantify it, so, I'm, uh, so I'll say this as broad scroll. Okay. You brought, the, the greatest orgasm for a woman is mental. Absolutely. There it is. Absolutely. She second that. She said absolutely. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's mental. Why do you say that? Why why do you say that, Phaedra? Why do I say that? Yeah. I can be around the house during the daytime by myself, talking to myself, but that doesn't oh, I can't say it that way. 
that is not as rewarding. <laughs> <laughs> Say it. Say it. <laughs> not as <laughs> rewarding <laughs> as if when he's home and yeah. we're talking and he's dropping nuggets and gems. And yeah. It's just blessing my whole life. It just gives me tingles all on the inside. I think a piece that's missing is if you're getting with a woman that can provide for herself. Did it, it's it, like, do something good. that I can't that's do, good. That's you good. know? So I had that's to. Good. <laughs> I, I really had to shift, honestly, and say this is, yeah. this is what he loves. So let me kind of pull back in that and let me let you. Does right. it mean anything to you, though, now? Yeah, he buys me stuff? Yeah. It does, because I know that that's one of his ways that he loves me. So you've accepted that Absolutely. Fully. I tried to stop it one day. Absolutely. I well, stopped. I said, I'm not buying anything yeah. else. She was like, why? I said, because it's not that you don't appreciate it. It's just that I don't want my extension of love to only be seen as, oh, this is his way of showing me. Mm. I want to love you the way how you, you want to be loved. There right. it is. That's right. where it evolves yeah, I want to love how you want to be loved, and if my way is biased, and it only makes me feel fulfilled, mm-hmm. and you're not then that's just like rape. And I used to tell him all the time, like, <laughs> you're such an amazing provider. You're an amazing provider. And one day he said, I want you to say, like, I'm an amazing lover to you. Like, not sexually, but yeah. the fact that I can <laughs> love you the way that you desire to be loved. So, yeah, don't tell me I'm a provider. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I know that. Tell me I'm loving you right. Right, <laughs> right. Telling me I have mental orgasms. Right. Tell me that, that's what I want to hear. Because there's a thing we talk about called uh, EM, EMP. Emotional, mental, physical. Mm-hmm. Be, she's emotional. Then she's mental. Then she's physical. Absolutely. Now we totally reverse. Yeah. Absolutely. We physical, <laughs> yeah. mental, then emotional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We ain't got to get to our emotions. Right. <laughs> we ran around that physical, ran around there <laughs> where they're totally flipped the opposite yeah. way. Yeah. So let me learn how to be intimate with, and I told you earlier, intimacy isn't sex. Intimacy yeah. is mm-hmm. information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Emotionally. That's what I want to know. I want to know you're happy. I want to know I satisfied you mm-hmm. the way you enjoyed it. Not the way I enjoyed it. That's one sided. That's not to me. That's not fair. Mm-hmm. That's not fair in any relationship. How long were y'all married before you actually thought that way? Before it transitioned to that, what did y'all have to overcome in order to get oh to this gosh. new? Uh-oh. Jesus Christ! Which part? Uh, you don't have all day. Which, you don't have all day. No, you, you gonna a, need six parts. <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> listen, you know. it's couples watching this. I get so many DMs from people who said, "Listen, my." Husband has checked out. There's nothing I could do to get him to check back in. Uh, he wants this one lady sent me a DM on IG saying that he wants to get uh, a divorce. He's always told her. Well, recently he's been telling her he never loved her to begin with. Um, and he doesn't want to be married anymore. She said, what do I do? Do I do I keep holding on by faith, expecting God to change it? Um, I asked, have they gone through marriage counseling? She said that no, that he won't go. Um, and so you have this, this conundrum that's going on. You have people that feel like, Marriage is just it's just not worth it anymore. You know, you're you're investing all this time and energy into somebody that you can't predict an outcome from them. And they'll see couples like you and be like, oh, that's just only them. They they somehow her mom spoke something to him. Heck, my mom ain't saved. So we don't we don't <laughs> have that story. My mom would have told me to leave that dude alone the minute he got locked up. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I don't even understand how y'all got here. Y'all talking about God. Y'all talking about like what? Let, 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 let's break this down in simpler a simpler form. How did y'all overcome certain circumstances and what were, just bring up, what, what what's the biggest obstacle? No, I'll say this. What's the first obstacle y'all had to overcome? Communication. Communication. Yes. Talk. What was wrong? <clears throat> I'll say this. If we were taught what we know now, you know when you see traffic up on the highway and you call your girl and you're like, are you a guy? You're like, hey, man, don't go up on 95 yep. or whatever the highways are here. And if you would listen to that, you wouldn't be stuck in traffic. Facts. So we didn't have the somebody tell us traffic is ahead. But now we've been through the bumps. So it's like when I tell you this is possible, when I tell you you can communicate with this alpha male, even if you are an alpha female, when I say I use my strength by submitting to whatever the plan is, by being weak enough to follow him, you have to shift in your head and say, okay, I can do that. Because if you continue to say, I'm going to do it my way, you're going to get the results. 
that you've been receiving. You use the word that's, that's triggering people. You said become weak enough to listen to what he has to say? Absolutely. Do you, let, I, I want to say this. Did you just say most, weak? Do you don't want to hear you say weak? Because it was a choice. <laughs> but I chose not to do and my think, way, but to do his way. I want to redefine what we say is weak. Exactly. I want to redefine it because most of us think, I, I've shared this word, so this is nothing new. It takes more strength to submit than it does to lead. 100%. Oh, sir. It takes more strength to be a neck than it does to be a head. Yep. So by uh, by natural means, she's already stronger than me. So when we say weak, it is a sense of this is something I am choosing, choosing to, do. to do. It's not that you're stronger than me. It's not that I don't have equality. It's what I'm choosing to do. And for the for instance, the young lady you said with the whole, with the DM thing, I would probably tell her stop trying to solve a right now problem because he has yesterday's issues. Mm-hmm. When he said, mm-hmm. "I stopped mm-hmm. loving you back then." You're trying to get him to love you now without healing back then. Back then, right. So which means it's not even the trauma. It's not even the he don't like me now. There's a little boy inside of him that's hurt. Mm-hmm. There's something. I don't know what happened. Anything could have happened. And most of us think most I needed her to know she wasn't always the problem. Sometimes I had past trauma issues that she said something that triggered in my head. Mm-hmm. She would say stuff like this. Can we talk for a minute? Oh my God. Oh Jesus like Christ. A lot of men, a lot of men hate that. Jesus though. Christ. <laughs> but even in that, so here's communication. Jesus. I had a choice to make. Either I'm gonna continue to go and say, can we talk? Or we're eating dinner and I'll just say, babe, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And just leave yeah. Yeah. Why, like, why, 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 why don't y'all do that? Why, why, well, y'all, why y'all got to Well, I do now because I know better. <laughs> <laughs> That's a setup of failure. Like, Jesus I don't even treat my kids like that. I'll just sit around and just start talking about whatever. He's like, hey, listen, we're going to talk when I get home. They'd be like, they mind oh, is like. It's go- so, so what you're doing, especially if, I've, if I'm unstable, if, yeah. if I'm dealing with the sense of instability of being insecure as a man, because most men are probably not going to admit that they're insecure right? or that there's a little boy that we fight with or that we was abused or something yeah. happened in our life. So when you say it, you trigger it. And I, I hate to say it, but you're the person that's in front of me, so you're going to get the results of my trigger. Mm-hmm. Facts. But if you're not strong enough to know that, wait a minute, I'm not the problem, and how can I help him solve the problem? So she's trying to solve a right now problem mm-hmm. with yesterday's issues. And the worst thing to do in the world, and I told her this years ago, is don't ever give me what I used to need. That's right. Don't ever give me what, what I, I used, used to need. need. Yes. Because, Unpack that. Because you think I'm still there. Mm-hmm. Whatever that place was, whether it was immaturity, it was maturity, you give me something I needed 20 years ago, which means you still I'm there, which means you haven't evolved either. Yeah. You don't know the new me. You haven't realized that I've changed. I've, I've, I may have a fight, but it's not the same fight. Right. Or it's not personal. Again, all of this is hypothetical. Or guess what? He may not be the problem. She may be the issue. It may be something he want different, but until we have an authentic conversation of intimacy, int- into me see, yeah. into me see of this is my problem. These are my issues. And I think that was the biggest thing for us for communication, like, and She'll share this with you if she want to. It was like, I couldn't be her dad. Like, I'm not your daddy. Yeah. That, I'm, that, that was a trait she was looking for in me. And I'm like, yo, come on, man. How was she looking? Because I want people to understand what that may come off looking like. How was she looking for you to be her dad or not be her dad? Well. I'm going to ask you, Phaedra. Yeah. What okay, was I was going to say, well, let me answer. So yeah. because of my past, I was looking for stability. Someone that wasn't going to abandon me, right? Because when there's absence, Mm -hmm. that looks like abandonment. Right. Someone that will provide for me if I chose not to provide for myself. Okay? However, one day when maturity started to sit in, I remember having a conversation with him and saying, it's so unfair for me to hold you in bondage to this type of requirement. Like, I want you to be my husband. I want you to be my boyfriend and date me still. And I want you to provide for me. And I want you to be my daddy. And I want you, like, that's that's craziness. How'd that come out? How did, how did you know that you were putting that on him? This is going to sound weird, right? But really establishing a relationship with God. Saying, what is it I need to do to be better? Because what I'm doing right now isn't working. Now, we're together. Right. right? But it's, but it's, and it's pushing me away. Right. Like it's pushing so what me do away. I need, and a lot of times we don't want to say, what is it that I need to do to be better? We want to make the person that we're in a relationship with at fault. 
I want to go back to something I said earlier when we were talking about when I said now I know better. I don't use that statement because he's my dad. He's going to spank me. So now you know better. You better do better. It's now I understand this part of him. I understand that if I say we need to talk, I'm not going to get a positive outcome. Right. So do I want a positive outcome or not? Hmm. It's like, you know, better, you know, if I want to lose weight, you know what to do to lose weight. So do I continue to eat whatever it is I want to eat or do I, right? So I know, I know the outcome that I'm desiring. So let me change my mindset and say, you know what? Let me approach him in a different way. How long was that going on where y'all felt like y'all had communication issues? Oh, yes. <laughs> years. Years. <laughs> years. Oh, I'm talking While years. While we're trying to develop Five years, six years, ten years. Strategies. How long y'all been married? Almost 30. Almost 30 now. Almost 30 years. Yep. <laughs> so the Ooh. first 10 years was calling it hell would be a compliment. Yeah. Really? That's a nice way to say that's it. That's a nice way. See, that's a nice hell. That's a compliment. That's a nice way of saying it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think even through it, we both were intentional. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> this is going to work. Like, this is hell. This is going to work. Y'all right. felt like it was going to work, really. Yeah. Y'all at 22, really? 23, really? 24. But you got to look at, you have two alphas that's saying we're not going to give up. Yeah, I'm not going to do so it. So we can accomplish gonna, anything. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. So, 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 so why were you so committed on not, never giving up? Because I don't like losing. <laughs> I hate losing. I mean, and you felt like divorce was I a loss. It was a loss. It, it was a, for me. Now that's for me. It yeah. was a loss. And and I'm gonna say this: my mother and father were married 46 years mm -hmm. before, oh, okay. my, before, before my dad mm -hmm. passed. 46 years. 46, 46 years before my dad passed. So I had never seen a failed marriage. I've seen disagreements. I've seen fights. I've seen all that kind of stuff. But I've never seen it fail. Mm -hmm. So I thought to myself, that's all I seen modeled in front of me. Whereas hers was totally opposite. Right. And her model, for, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, was I'm not going to live that life. I want it to work Absolutely. regardless. Absolutely. So you got two people hell-bent mm. on, no, this is going to work. This is going to, and we don't, I think sometimes we give up too early. I agree. I think sometimes we, and again, I'm not, if divorce happens, divorce happens. Yeah. It's life. It happens. But I think sometimes we give up in people's premature seasons and don't give them a chance to grow up. She gave me a chance to grow up. Because if she didn't give me a chance to grow up and we got divorced earlier, somebody else would benefit or somebody else would benefit right. from what I didn't allow her to mature into. Right. So I think we, you, you said something earlier, earlier which is, is kind of funny because if Warren Buffett came in here or if a financial guru came in and started talking about money, yeah. we would listen. Mm -hmm. So it's funny how we don't listen to the rich marriages, we listen to the broken ones. Correct. Nobody broke won't come in and tell me how to invest my money. Correct. No broke person gonna tell me <laughs> you broke. Mm -hmm. Where, why am I listening to you? Matter of fact, both of us need to get in this financial class <laughs> and listen. So we choose to listen to brokenness, and now we label everything as broken. Oh, that's just them. No, that's not true. That that is not true. There are great marriages that are looking for other great marriages. There are broken ones. And Bishop said this, and I'm and I'm a roll with it. We gotta learn to love each other broken. Yeah. She broke. Yeah. I'm broke. Yes. We all have messed up flaws. Facts. Love me broken. Right. Yes. Right. Love me through my mess. Yes. Help me with it. You may have the tools to help my brokenness. There it is. Right. But the devil is fighting it. But the mm -hmm. life is fighting it. Mm -hmm. So now if you're too busy looking at my scars and my brokenness and not love me through it, mm -hmm. then you're not going to get the benefit of who I'm going to become. Mm -hmm. And she loved me through my brokenness. Mm -hmm. And see, some people will look at that and say, so now you're telling me to embrace struggle love. Yeah. Yeah, you will have to start. <laughs> yeah, what? I do believe what there's a period of time me? that you yeah. will have to. I mean, you have two different people yeah. that's coming together <laughs> and, and it's like talking? opposites go live in the house <sighs> together and get along and enjoy life. Can I please give a public, uh, 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 what you call it? Public, a public, service, public service announcement. Yeah. Marriage is difficult sometimes. Yes. <laughs> it's a struggle. It is. What are you talking about? It's a struggle. Life is a struggle. Your right. job is a struggle. Raising Running a kids business is a struggle. Is a struggle. Is a struggle. <laughs> Running a business is a struggle. <laughs> Becoming yourself is a struggle. So now we say marriage, oh, it's going to be fine. No, no, no. You have to intentionally work mm -hmm. through the progress mm -hmm. until process happens mm -hmm. and you grow in it and you mature in it. It's like, okay, yeah, I get that. And some people, you might have got a divorce. Guess what? On the next one, I'm going to grow through it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to learn from that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to learn the do's and the don'ts. We get the guns. Okay, the fight is over. We ain't fighting anymore. What do you? What? Marriage to me 
should be the first thing we understand that God, the enemy is gonna fight against. I said it's the image of God. Absolutely. Yep. That's the first thing he's gonna fight against. Yep. The devil does not care about your money. Nope. What are you gonna take your money to hell? Right. right. The devil took my house. What are you gonna do? Where are you gonna put it? He's gonna live in it. Yeah, gonna what are you gonna do? He, you don't even wanna live in it. Why do you wanna live in it? The devil took my car. No, he didn't. The devil, no, no. He's he's after what is consequent to what what God wants. Yeah. Yes. He's after the image. Yeah. He's after the image. Say, John, read. The devil is after your image. Whether you're broken, whether you're divorced, whether you're still together, he's after the image. Mm -hmm. He's so much after the image, he desired to be like God. There mm -hmm. it is. And I said, mm -hmm. he said, I'll make myself mm -hmm. like him. Yes. He'll make, and God is so yeah. much of a gangster. In Genesis, he says, I'll make man in my <laughs> likeness and in my image. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to let the, de the devil yeah. see everything he wanted to become right. that he can't right. become. Right. The devil ain't fighting you for no money. He fighting you because you look like God. Yeah. He fighting you because your potential. He yeah. fighting your kids. He's Preach. fighting your money. He, he's fighting relationships yeah. all because you look like God. Mm -hmm. There it is. You're and then the generations image. that are up under us are coming up and they're looking, saying what they don't want or what they do want. Yep. Right. 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 So I want our children to be able to look and say, you know, I want that when I grow up. And if it's enough of that reproducing. Yes. It's what's modeled in front of you. Yes. It's absolutely. And that's what we try to teach is what's, what's being modeled in front of you. Yeah. One of the biggest compliments I got, I was at Chipotle one day and this young I mean, he looked like he was in high school, but I ended up finding out he was in his freshman year uh, at, of Divinity School. And he was in front of me. He said, Lateris Whitfield. I said, yeah. He said, dear future wifey. Aww. I said, what you doing watching this? Like, you know what I'm saying? I was like, like I, said, I said, what you doing watching this? I said, he said, man, I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 18. No, he, he said 19. He said 19. He said, I said, so what, what are you doing watching that? He said, it's teaching me how to do relationships right the first time. Uh -huh. I said, hold on. Because, uh, you know, I get emotional real quick. I'll mess around and be crying in line at Chipotle. <laughs> I said, hold on, now, hold on. You said what? He said, I'm watching your podcast so I can learn how to do relationships right the first time. He said, do you mind me uh, uh, paying for your food? I was like, no, nah, I, mean, you know, oh. I, mean, I mean, I should be paying for your food. You know, you're a college student or whatever. He said, no, sir. I want to honor you. Can I can I wow. pay, pay for your food? And it's hard for me to accept stuff from people. And a guy like quickened my spirit and said, let this young man be a blessing mm -hmm. to you because I'm going to even bless him greater by mm -hmm. him blessing mm -hmm. you. And I allowed that to happen. I started seeing And then I had uh, I did this um, self-love soiree. And these two 22-year-old girls came to the thing. And I was like, God, y'all, this thing was like $250. Y'all y'all, <laughs> y'all pay for this? You know what I'm saying? And they, and they said the same thing. We're learning how to do relationships right the first cool. time. And I I, and, and it was just like this recurring theme where people would email me or DM me, a uh, young lady from uh, Great Britain, same thing, learn to do relationships right the first time. And I said, wow, God, I never even thought about them even catching the glimpse Ooh. of their future wife and it, what it's, it's doing powerful. for them. Yeah. Blew my mind. It's so powerful. It you, I'm going to say two things to you. One is, I'm going to say it because I, I feel you, God. I'm going to say it anyway. You are robbing people of the opportunity to be blessed when you don't let them sow into you. Correct. If you're good ground and that man wants to sow into you or some of your followers, friends, subscribers want to sow into you, you're robbing them of the opportunity to be blessed. Yeah, God told because me Because your seed, their seed, your good ground. Yeah. Right. They can't get the harvest right. until they put it in the ground. Right. The other thing is, I think what's key, key about this next generation is that we teach them how to balance a checkbook. Yeah. And I don't mean naturally balance mm -hmm. checkbook. I mean the checks, the balances, communication. Mm -hmm. Am I doing it? Mm -hmm. How do I want my wife to look? How do I want my husband to look? Can I help them? How am I going to spiritually? Like, all of that is a checkbook, mm -hmm. checks and balances. Because what you don't want to do is go into a relationship already in a deficit. Yes. Right. And then you're trying to make withdrawal right. from a deficit. Mm -hmm. You're going to keep getting that insufficient fun thing. Yeah. You're going to keep. I'm, I'm not telling you age. I'm telling mine. Okay. So we were, we were so broke uh, one day. I would travel from ATM to ATM to find an ATM machine that gave me five dollars back. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> we have it like nine dollars in the bank. Mm -hmm. I literally been now you there. know I'm dating myself. Yeah. I'm I've been like, there. I gotta find one that only give you five dollars back. Yeah. Because I need to get five dollars out of the bank. Been there. Can't mm -hmm. do it. But no one told us checks and balances. Yeah. Checks yeah. and ba Let me check. How are you today? Yeah. You good? I, I, yeah. All right. Checks and balance. Well, listen, I'm not good today. This is what's going on in my life. And you got to be vulnerable enough to tell them somebody. Right. And you got to be strong enough to hold the vulnerability. Right. Because what I don't want to do is tell you my vulnerability and you use that as ammunition against there me. There it is. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you can't you can't do that. You have you ever shut a man down? Yep. Shoot me what I gave you it that I thought was personal. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's that that's it. So why you don't talk to me? Because you're gonna shoot me. Mm-hmm. You're gonna keep up. Listen, I'm not gonna self-sabotage my own self. <laughs> like, no, <nah, I'm> not <laughs> And men are different. We don't talk as much. Yeah. We process differently. Yeah. Yeah. Women talk it out. Men think it out. And now you got to walk through that process of thinking and talking and how do we how do we get together? And, and at the same light, I don't want to put all the omens on her mm-hmm. and think, okay, now she got to do all the talking. Every now and then I got to open my mouth. Facts. There it is. Thank you. Yeah, I got I to open my mouth now. When you look at <laughs> communication is a big hurdle that y'all overcame. Um, you mentioned about some financial stuff that y'all went through. How did y'all navigate through that? Mm. <laughs> you notice how this, you ask us these good questions, we just laugh. Right. Like, oh, my God. Because the coming together was so interesting. He went from having so much. As a drug dealer. (laughs) To not having a lot. Trying to do things the right way. You know. To. Tomato, tomato. I mean. Tomato, tomato. You call it what you want to call it. Tomato, tomato. The Lord has need of you. No. (laughs) I am honestly happy, though, that. We both had the mindset, and I know you keep hearing me say build, because that's to me that's so important, building in any area. Yeah. But that we had the mindset to build, and we were willing to struggle together. That's what I'm talking about. Right? If that means- I want you to tell them the truth, though, about this portion. Which part? She was willing to build before I was willing to build. This is true. Like, she was like, no, we're going to build together. Mm -hmm. And I bought an image. I would waste Mm -hmm. our money. Like, right now, I'm a shoe connoisseur. Like, Mm -hmm. I I got- (laughs) I got so many shoes, it's ridiculous. But I buy them now and I can afford them. Right. I bought them back then and I couldn't afford them. Right. I was paying for an image. She was trying to build and pay bills. I'm trying to get the new Jordans. And because, Jordan I, first because I know so he didn't first know any better. I'm trying to get Jordan right. when they first came out. So I was so I was making <laughs> immature mistakes. Yeah. When one day it hit me like, you know what? But if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to keep getting the same results. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, what are you talking about? So when she's... That, that word we talk about build. So I don't want you saying we just built together. Now I had to get built up. Mm-hmm. Then we built together. Mm-hmm. You, you said, so it wasn't just build, but, build, build. She and was while here, I, I was I here. Agree <laughs> with, I agree with the, the scale yeah. being high and low. But in my opinion, that's still building. In my opinion. Because if he was just oh, sitting yeah, she there like, me like, a, like really? a cheap, Oh no, we building together, baby. Yeah. I'm like, I know so I'm you, messing so, up. So you, you, you wasn't mad at him? You wasn't going off on him? I'm not going to get a good result if I do that. Oh, no. You don't do me like that. I would never say this publicly, and I know this is public. But <laughs> you say, nah, don't do you like that? This you is, ever want to get me? <laughs> this is so... You will not <laughs> Boy, look at here. My gay bye shot. Now, <laughs> oh, man. man. Does, does she know how to get the best out of me? <laughs> That's what I tell her all the time. The boys clown. They be like, mama, you sure know how to get out of that. But if you come at me sideways, <laughs> well, you going to get what, what's, what, what's coming at you sideways. Give me an example. What could she have said if you mismanaged the money and, and, and you done bought some joints? What could she have said that would have been wrong? Can I say this on your show? Probably yeah. Not. Probably not. If I ask, I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say if she chose to use a certain vernacular that sounded like it was an aggressive mm-hmm. alpha woman coming at me. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's what we're doing? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what you're doing? Mm-hmm. I, I would tell, and see, and I know mm-hmm. she get aggressive. I'm going to get aggressive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what we're not going to do, since we're going to have two heavyweights fighting, mm-hmm. then we might as well go then. <laughs> then we might as well listen. So, so that's what we're going to do. The appropriate So, So how did you use. learn the balance in that, though? How you learn I not really to do that? I've been debating on whether I should say this or say not, it. to be honest. Why, you going to give them the cheat code to uh, how you figure them out? <laughs> I don't Woo. care. I don't care. You know I don't care. I understand that in every man there's a little boy. Yeah. And the little boy wants to be celebrated, right? Yeah, she manipulated me. I'll it's not. I was waiting for him to say that. It's not she manipulation. <laughs> but I'm not going to rah, rah, rah at him. I'm going to say, thank you, babe. I really appreciate you taking the trash out. If you weren't here, I'd have to take it out myself. Oh, I really like the way you bring in all the groceries. You're so strong. Look at your she muscles. Manipulated I'm me. going to approach you in a positive <laughs> manner good. to get a positive result. I'm going to pay our tithe back in the day when we didn't have a whole lot and you oh, yeah, didn't I ain't want to. I ain't I'm still going to pay. And I'm like, oh, babe, I already wrote the check. That's back when we were writing checks. Yeah. I wrote the check. But if you don't want to give it, you can go ask the church for it back. <laughs> oh, no, you laughing. She said it for real. 
But I know that if I had come at him like, and I paid it, and you don't tell me what to do, and that's counterproductive. What you say? If you wanted, you go ask the church yeah, for it. She told me she said, "Well, I paid." It. I was like, "Why you did that?" Well, you know, you could go ask the church for it back. Yeah, you can ask him. Hey, church. Sorry. That money my wife just gave you, <laughs> she ain't have my permission to write that shit. <laughs> what would you think I'm gonna go back in there? No, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Cause I didn't. But it was, it was influence manipulation. It was teaching stop saying manipulation. Okay, it was powerful influence. That's it. <laughs> I was using my. It was power. words of affirmation, the love right. language. It was powerful Thank feminine you. influence. Because you wanted call it whatever to you be want to call it. That's honestly, and see, the, I'm telling you, if you apply it, like that's you don't want to do it, you want to come at him and be snippy and oh, no, that's all true, that. Though. I'm not gonna. I'm not raising my voice. I'm not doing all that because it's gonna be a war. So why would I do that? Uh, and that's gonna set us back. How many months, years, days, whatever, when I can just nicely say to you whatever it is I'm desiring or praise you for what I see that you're doing and not address the foolishness that I don't want to see. So Because so you're going to do whatever I no, celebrate. She, and I'm telling you, she's not lying. First Peter, First Peter chapter 3 mm -hmm. says that he may be one with the conduct. Mm -hmm. with the, that word conduct is not behavior. That word conduct is communication. In other words, you can win him, you can draw him by what you say to him. So you, the same in was the Old Testament when they said if you would rather sit on the rooftop right. than to be in a room with a of course woman. woman. Yeah. So the same voice that can drive him away, the same voice can draw him. Mm -hmm. So it's what you say. Like, boy, you probably say, why you put all that omens on me? What do you want it to work? Mm -hmm. Do you want to keep drawing him until he matures? Absolutely. Because he's gonna mature. I don't. Mm -hmm. Nah, I don't care. But I can. I don't. I don't think she. No, she's never raised her voice at me. Mm -hmm. Never call me out my name. Uh -uh. Never. Because you're not, you, <laughs> no, you're not gonna do it. You, you're gonna, all right, that's what we're gonna do. It's not that I can't. No, she could. But it's see, like. that's what you have to understand as a strong woman. I am choosing, yeah. right, to be nice to you, to celebrate you, to encourage you, to build with you, because I could build on my own. But we're gonna build together and accomplish more. So when I see him trying, to me, he was building. Tell me that. You just said something. You said, I could build separate, but we can build together and accomplish more. You believe that? Absolutely. So you tell me you believe this. Because well, I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna, we finna, we finna, we finna talk to the people who feel like I can do bad all by myself, which means I can do better by myself, too. Because it, it's the same ideology. So if you have that type of woman, or even a man, because a lot of men aren't choosing to be married because they'd be like, well, I don't want this, and if it goes wrong, then I'm splitting up my money, all that stuff. The reality is... For real. Are yeah, you like, serious? Good Lord. We've we been counting all of that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just right. sick of that. The reality is this. So you tell me, with a man that was mismanaging his finances, mm -hmm. you still felt like you could build better. Absolutely. Tell me, how's that? If you look at, this is a dream that I had a long time ago. So let's say the field was yellow. It was harvest time. So it was ripe and ready to be picked. But if it's one person picking the harvest, you would see one line, still a field of harvest. But if there are two people going out and gathering, you come back with more. Him wanting to buy shoes in that moment while I was unhappy about that, that was temporary. Because I know what's in me. Give me, give me, just give me a little bit of time. But you got to know that about yourself. You got to know that I'll tell anybody, whatever you put in my hands is going to prosper. Whatever you give me is going to grow. I just choose to believe that. So this situation is only temporary because I'm going to work on you and work on you. And you might not know that I'm working on you, but I'm going to work on you. And at some point you're going to change. You don't even, I, and I want to say this, please forgive me because y'all, mm -hmm. you don't even have to believe it. It's the nature of a woman. That's what I was about to say. That's, if, that's if, the I get, that's, if I give Martha, her a seed, yes. she's going to give me a, a child back. Absolutely. If I give her one thing, she's going to give me 10 back. Mm -hmm. She's that's who she she's going to multiply anything I give. It does. I can tell her I got an idea. Here's what I'm thinking about doing. And she's going to just gone. Mm -hmm. it, it's just going to do that. Every woman has that ability. Right. Every woman has that ability. It's just making sure you're impregnated by the right, right person. That is mm. correct. You got. You have to make sure you met, and I mean, in pregnant. I'm just talking about natural. I know what you're talking, talking about. You talking about spiritual, spiritual financial, yeah. all of that stuff. everything. Because yeah. because I I preached a message once called "Show Me Your Carfax." Is that most of us have spent so much time getting in bed, intimacy with people who has a twin size sheet mm -hmm. when you got a king size anointing. Mm -hmm. 
and now they can't cover you. They can't, mm-hmm. so they can only cover. I don't know what you know what it feels like to be in a bed. And you try to pull the covers up and your feet still dangling out. You like, I'm still cold. Then you try to put it over your feet. Then it won't get be like, oh, you're talking about something that's frustrating. Oh, please don't have a minute to cover me. Oh god. Oh, and that's the thing I can say is when I was wrong, when I was doing this, she could cover me. So now I don't need her to cover me anymore. Right. Oh, I cover her, the entire family, and the generations now. Mm. But you had to have patience enough right. to say, okay, you know what? This is what we walked through. And let me tell you something. I can open. I, man, it's up there to admit what she wanted to admit, but I gave a Say hell. what? Oh, yeah. I gave it's a hell. Okay, that ain't a cuss word, is it? No. Hell? Okay. Let me mm. see. Yeah. How are you using it? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the conversation you're using? <laughs> no. You gave a hell. Yeah, and it wasn't because I was just being malicious. It's just that, like, I didn't know church. I didn't know, so I just kind of always lived my own life. So you're not going to come tell me how to live my life. This is What's always been modeled. My friends, my cousins, we always did this. Like, they had a problem with me getting married. That's a whole other issue. So I was used to living that. And then now you're coming and you're fighting. So I'm fighting who I was and she's trying to tell me who I'm becoming. Mm -hmm. So you got two fights that are happening at the same time. And at the same time, she doesn't know who she is. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, okay, now what happens here? So when I talk about the power of a strong woman, her ability to build... It's like, yeah, I'm like, she she told me one day, she said, uh, you can make it without me. I said, I can, but I don't want to. So you were talking about every woman has a little girl inside. Please, please break that down. Every, she stated earlier about uh, every young man, every man has a little boy in him. Right. Every woman has a little girl in her. And if I'm not addressing the little girl in her, sometimes that little girl will scream out out of the body of a woman. And so if there's an issue or something that I'm doing or I'm causing her to feel like I'm good, you know who I am? This is what I do. I do this. I go here. I preach this. I do this. And I'm not addressing the little girl. Sometimes a little girl will make feel like, well, you don't need me. Yep. Which now brings abandonment. Mm-hmm. Which now says, okay, he really don't need me. Because I don't know how many people you'll get to actually admit this, Pretty much a lot of the places that we go or I have a, whether I'm preaching or doing whatever, there's always applause. There's an, there's applause everywhere. Well, that don't want to sound arrogant. There's like people, good to see you, you know, whether you go. (laughs) And I don't want her to feel like she got to live up to the image of what they do. Like I, they applaud you, they applaud you, but she knows me, like me, (laughs) me, not the person on the stage, not the person. She knows that me too, but she knows the other me, what God did through her and the family to become who I am today. Yeah. So I don't ever want her to feel like, can I make it without you? Yes, but I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't want to. I don't want that little girl to know if there's a daddy issue. I want her to know daddy wants you. And I mean that in every way. Oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. See? <laughs> you married. You can say whatever you want to say. <laughs> kids that come here by immaculate <laughs> conception. Daddy, daddy <laughs> wants you. Yeah. <laughs> Did yeah. I say that? Say it again. Say it again. Uh, Hercules. Hercules. <laughs> yes, sir. No. Uh, so y'all about to celebrate 30 years of marriage. When is that anniversary? Ooh. Tell them, babe. You don't know. Why? He, Who? No, 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 no. He, no. he normally Oh, no, no, no. That's the, oh, oh, totally opposite way. She not tell him because I forgot. Right, right. She said tell him because she don't remember. <laughs> he always gets it right. Because she, she don't remember. <laughs> you know how ladies are, he don't ask him, no, no, I know. No, when, I, when I know not? November 15th. Yeah. Okay. November 15th. Okay. That's why when you was talking about your the healing your, retreat. Yeah, mm-hmm. your healing retreat. My birthday is the 9th. Our anniversary is 15th. I was mm-hmm. like, man, I may need to figure out how can we get over there. <laughs> To do that, like, oh, that would be, dope. That, would, that would be, dope. be dope. Yeah. dope, 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 dope. To be able to heal, retreat, and get away, relax, <laughs> and need that by a shot. And, and Las like Cabos. That. Yes, and Las yeah. Cabos. Look yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. 30 years. But I don't want people to think that, like, it's been easy. Like, there's, there's a strategy behind it. There's a system behind what we do. Mm-hmm. It's not... I don't want people to feel like, well, you just pray. No, you don't just pray. No. No, you don't just pray. There, you there's a system. You have to do something. You have to <laughs> be mentored. You got to listen to somebody. You got to have something modeled in front of you. It's almost like somebody getting a, a million dollars and they say, what do I need to do with it? Hold on. I've done 
I've done some research. Y'all actually have courses y'all teach about stuff like this, don't you? <laughs> yes. 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 So, that, so, yes. I, so and, and see, I'm going to tell you, I get a lot of people that DM me, and they always like, can you refer me to um, – um, a marriage coach or <laughs> or a therapist or whatnot. And therapists normally work in a certain area. Like, mm-hmm. they only license in that state or whatnot. Right. And I was like, man, I wish I knew people that <laughs> actually can talk to and deal with people across the borders and right. lines and state lines mm-hmm. or whatnot. And when I tell you, I believe, like, this is the miracles and manifestation season. Yeah. And yes, so I've is. been asking God. I was like, I need somebody. Because I'm telling you, I don't, I, don't have these, I don't have no answers for no folks. You know what I'm saying? Because the truth be told, the first thing I ask them, I'll say, listen, have y'all tried marriage counseling? They're like, well, he won't go. And I'll be like, well, will he watch the podcast with you? That's all I got. Yeah. I got either <laughs> marriage counseling or you're going to watch this podcast. That's all I, I got for it. you. That's it. I love Other it. Other than that, I'll be like, I don't know what to tell you. I you love know what I'm saying? It. And so I want people that I trust, that I believe in, that I know have figured it out. And you've been on my lives a couple of times, and people have been like, when are you going to get them on the podcast? We're going to get them on the podcast. And the first thing I said to you, I said, I want you on here, but I want your wife. Yep. Because yep. that's where you see yep. both of y'all operating right. And in tandem with each other, knowing that it ain't just this man trying to give relationship advice. Right. This is Correct. a married couple no, giving this is advice both. on marriage. This is and both. that's why I believe it takes both of y'all. So um, what do y'all, what do y'all do y'all have any courses y'all, y'all got coming up or anything? Like wow. what y'all got coming up? Wow. Y'all, y'all need to have something. So he, he, so this is listen, this is hot off the press. It is. You are getting it first. What you got coming yeah. up? God is my witness. You are getting this first. Yeah. The church don't even know about this. That's right. Like nobody other than our sons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The editor yeah. and all this, so we have a new book coming out. You have a book. We have a new book coming out yes. <laughs> called Marriage Keys. However, the marriage—I don't want you to get caught up on the book. Birth off the book, we do courses. What's called Relationship Challenge on August twenty third, twenty fourth, or twenty fifth. So it's a three day challenge. This this is what it is. Write this down. To everybody that loves their future wife, write this down. <laughs> write down the word system. System. Save yourself strength. Time, energy, and money. Save yourself. Strength, Strength, time, time, energy, energy, and money. That's what the system is. And when you create a system around your life, when you create a system around the atmosphere you live in, you save yourself. Strength, time, energy, and money. So for three days, that's all we talk about is a system. Mm-hmm. I love the interview you did uh, with the girl the other day. The single, uh, what's, um, uh, who are we talking oh about? The, God. the feminine April Mason? Yes, yes. April, April Oh my Mason. God. <laughs> That thing I loved it. What you like? Are you talking about? Oh, you came on the live. I came on the live. Yeah, I came. I, no, I saw it, and here's what I thought was funny. She said she called it the six second rule, where she teach a woman how to look at him for six yeah. seconds. Yeah. I was like, ooh, that's nasty. I love it. But then I thought, ten years into the marriage, you keep looking at him six seconds. He'd be like, what you looking at? What you looking at? <laughs> I done did something wrong. You want to fight? So I was laughing. I said, now she going to teach you how to get how them. To get them. Mm-hmm. We going to teach you how to keep them. How to keep them. Right. Right. That's it. Right. That's it. So I thought that was funny. Right. I said, oh, she is so right because she stared me down. Mm-hmm. But she stared me down not too long. I'm like, uh, did I do something? I started playing in my head. I told her I love her. I gave her a kiss. <laughs> We prayed together. I didn't cuss. I, I, I got the toilet bad. paper. I wrote, I love you on the right, toilet paper. Yeah, right, I did right. all that. Did I do it? I picked up my underwear. Did I? <laughs> you got six seconds, boy. That's so six seconds. True. So, but I, I say that be funny because it's really good because six seconds in an early season is different than six seconds in a marriage season. Mm. So we do a course and yeah. um, it's called uh, Relationship Challenge and yeah. Uh, I throw her under the bus. She's better at it than I am. Um, and what I mean by that is because they have, you know, you have life coaches. Yeah. Well, she does wife coaching mm-hmm. for wives, for those who are married and those who potentially want to be married. Right. So I've always figured it this way. You get a strong woman, she know how to make a strong man. Absolutely. Oh, she know how to make a strong Absolutely. man. She, and I know we talking about man, man, you got to make your man. And that's fine. I get it. But you get you a good woman, mm-hmm. and there's some good ones that's out there that's saying, I need some help in making yeah. <laughs> right. a good man. Right. So she's, yeah, and she, she does more to talking than I do as it relates so to that. So something that y'all do, was this on, in person, virtual, or y'all on Zoom? It's like, how does this work? Virtual, on Zoom. So y'all do mm-hmm. like, uh, how long is this course? Three days. Talk, tell them about it. No, go see, ahead. She don't want to see. She don't okay. like talking about so, it. <laughs> see, you know what's so funny about it? Now, this is what's funny. You wouldn't think she would say nothing. 
But when she get out with the women, she be like, I'm like, well, wait a minute. What are, you, what are you? She's talking about, no, that's that's my atmosphere. Yes. When I get with them, we atmosphere. just talk to yes. each other and we do this. So yeah, we have this relationship it. university. Our overarching thing mm-hmm. is relationship university. That's what we do. So we have wife coaching, um, marriage mentorship, marriage keys, um, the three-day challenge that we do on April April, Lord have mercy, August, August 23rd, 23rd through 24th, 25th. 25th. Yes. And we'll discover, we'll talk about systems. Yeah. We'll talk about uh, communication. Absolutely. We'll talk about sex the right way. Absolutely. What, okay, I can say that on here. You can. Mm-hmm. I can't say that. We can talk about sex, sex the right way. Because you should be having it uh, a lot of it. Go ahead. Yeah, we can talk about intimacy <laughs> uh, and what does it actually mean. Right. right. And, and for one of the things now, and I say this, and I'm not going to cry. For me, I think when a man learns how to talk to a woman, you have her become who she can become. That's right. I think, I think one of the misquoted scriptures in the Bible is when we say that he that findeth the wife oh. findeth oh. a good thing and obtaineth favor before God. Why? Explain. I believe in etymology. I told you I did a deep dive. I believe in the study of words. So if you study the word findeth, the end of it is E-T-H, which literally means I-N-G. So how can you be finding a wife? If you only found her one time, you can't be finding her continuously. So that word must mean something different than to find by the Webster Dictionary. The word literally means to cut, to carve. He that cuts and carves out a wife, cuts and carves out a good thing and obtains favor for God. Prove it, Pastor. I'm going to prove it. If you back up a few verses, he says, life and death is in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And I'm afraid that we've removed and made her become a wife and us not speaking her into a wife. When he says you obtain favor, if you look up that word favor, it is the same, literally the same word that he speaks to Adam when Adam calls her Eve. (laughs) He says you have the ability to call her what she's going to become. It is your responsibility. You get favor when you do what I do. You get favor when you carve her out. You get favor when you speak that. So I don't think it's her responsibility to come to me as a wife. I think it's my responsibility to cultivate her as a wife. She came to me as a woman. She came to me as a girl. She came to me that way. But as a wife, and I'm going to get people, I'm sure you're going to get people, I don't get, that's fine. That's fine. All I'll say is if you're going to read it, let's not just read King James. Let's read the original words. What does findeth mean? What does favor mean? Because we're taking the responsibility. He that find a wife, girl, I found me a wife. What is that? What is a wife? What What is the def- If you say you became a wife, what is that? Because a wife to one man is different than a wife to another man. <laughs> so it can't be a cookie cut mode. So it has to be something that is nurturing for me that I need in my life. And I have the ability to eat what I've been speaking. Let me tell you how dope that is, because what you just said. <laughs> let me tell you something, <laughs> boy. Let me tell you. Because you said all the way back. <laughs> yeah, because that, that's the. I be, but let me tell you something, because well, I, I believe so firmly in that. I believe in cultivating uh, Miles Monroe. Oh, uh, yes, you Lord. know he really touched and talked about that so much, where we still uh, regurgitate what he said about the cultivation of a wife. Um, but what's so dope about what both of y'all have just shared is that she has the ability to speak to the king in you, even though you're a boy, to Absolutely. raise you up verbally from this little boy mm-hmm. to this man mm-hmm. that she wants by not using her words to be destructive. You went scripturally where you talked about the Bible says it's better for a man to live on the corner of the roof of his house mm-hmm. than to share the space of a quarrelsome mm-hmm. woman. Again, mm-hmm. that's words that we keep saying. And now you're saying that in order for a, a woman to to transform into a wife, it takes the man to do what? Speak to her. Uh, this whole earth was spoken into right. existence. Is God let, say, let there be this, let there be that, let there be this. If we really understand the magnitude and the gravity of our words, you can speak to someone's impotence yes. by telling a young boy, you're never going to be anything. You're going to always be like your daddy. You can speak to that young girl. <laughs> you ain't nothing but little old H, you little fast tail girl. Yep. And you can speak those things to her. Um, and what's so dope about it is that you even said, uh, Phaedra, speak those things that be not as though they were. Correct. Is a scripture reference of when you were saying, yeah, I know he was 
was mismanaging mm-hmm. his little money, his little Nike. I'm not finna fall out about some <laughs> doggone do $100 shoes. Not you know what I'm saying? It. I'm not finna make a mountain out of this molehill. Mm-hmm. And uh, some people look at that and be like, nah, I just can't trust a man that's not doing, that's, that's mismanaging finances. I don't want that in my life. Mm-hmm. I don't like that in my life. Um, if you can't trust him because of what he mismanaged, then my question is how strong are you? Because there will be something that you mismanage. <laughs> it may not be money. Yep. You may mismanage your emotions. You may mismanage relationships. And you're asking by somebody to trust you when you mismanage something. That's why I tell you, be careful to whether a woman's making millions of dollars, no money. I don't. I, that's why the whole I don't subscribe to. If a man don't have no, no, as much money as me, I can't date him. You know, yeah. I don't. I don't really get into that because then you quantify everything by money. There it is. So then the money becomes the issue because now you value in the dollar as opposed to the words. Yep. Because he, what do you want a man that makes ten million but speaks to you like you ten dollars? Mm-hmm. Yep. Or a man that's hustling and grinding with ten dollars but make you feel like you're worth ten million dollars. Yeah. Because eventually, if he keeps speaking you into $10 million, he's going to become that. <laughs> he sure is. He's going to become that. So now we got to redirect what we say, redirect yes. how we say it, how we believe. I just don't trust it. Well, then that comes from some type of trauma yep. that you generally don't want to address. And I was trying not to preach because y'all said preaching earlier. So I was trying not to. Go there. But there is something when... Peter walks up and says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I, I, give, give, to these words, I give to thee. Rise up and walk. Here's some of the things that we forget. He's speaking a word, but he says, here's what I'm going to give you. Mm-hmm. Oh, we missed this. He's not just giving him a word. He's showing him what he's getting ready to do. He tells him, I've been walking. You're getting ready to walk. Right. Look, I, I'm modeled in front of you. You've watched everybody else walk past you. You watch everybody else get a divorce. Everybody else get married. He says, no, I'm putting another model mm-hmm. in front of you, mm-hmm. which you can become. So Sylvan Go, he said, I don't have the tangible stuff, but if I can give you a vision, if I can show you what a marriage should look like, right. this is what you, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. So before we over-spiritualize it, God gives us a vision. He gives us a model of what it should become. God says, I looked into the world. I couldn't find nobody. I couldn't find anybody. So I had to get another vision. Yeah. And I, if you, if you can't walk because somebody mishandled something, you need to get another vision. Listen, Don, <laughs> I don't know when you finna launch this this course or whatever, but you gotta give my 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 listeners a, a discount. Uh I want some type of code or something, some link. You can do can that. you get please? Yes. I need a link or something <laughs> because I want it's, and that's why I say I know God is so uh strategic in what he's doing. Um, this is a season of Miracles and Manifestations, the last episode, and I can't wait to hear people DM me and say, yes. God restored my marriage. Yes. And I can't Ooh. wait to people say, we had filed the paperwork and we were about to go to court and my husband or my wife decided to say, hey, listen, let's go ahead and give Ooh. this one last chance. Let's just, let, 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 let's just see if this don't work, if this if this challenge don't work, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. we're going to go ahead and throw mm-hmm. in the town. We're going to go ahead and try this thing out. That's that's what I want to see happen. You asked me a question, and I told you I would get the answer in this broadcast. You asked me the question, if my wife and I had a lifetime movie named after us in our life, what would we name it? None of us could think of a name. But while you were talking, and I hope I'm talking to somebody today, this would be the title of the movie. It's not over. Mm. It's not over. It's not. I don't care where you are right now. Yeah. I don't care if you had a divorce. Right. I don't care where you are. It's not over. Mm. Right. The marriage isn't over. God is not through with you. You still have purpose. You still have an assignment. That's we'll right. give you the discount. We'll we'll do all of that stuff. But I I believe so much in what God has given us Absolutely. that I'm here to tell you it's not over. Absolutely. The only way you know it's not over is because of information. Right. Most of us don't have information problems. Mm. We got an execution problem. Right. Pastor, how do I take all this information? How do I execute it? Here's how you execute it. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. Let me tell you something. I am 6'4", whatever pounds I am. <laughs> say whatever I, you want to say that part? As big as I am. <laughs> I have never played in the NFL. Yeah. Never. Now I have the body type to yep. do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Never played in the NFL. Because I had an execution problem. Mm-hmm. Not information. I played football, just never played in the NFL because I wasn't willing to execute to do everything it took to make it to the next level. I'm glad you said that because in the book, there is one piece that says, because people are looking, this is my opinion, and you're saying, oh, it looks like it's working. It looks like the grass is green, right? <laughs> but the grass is green wherever you water it. Yeah. 
Wherever you now, if you don't water it, of course, it's gonna have dry spots and chinch bugs and all this other stuff happening. But if you're willing to, we have the keys that if you <laughs> will apply them, it's like a a fail proof plan. And I think we say it not like, done now because we've been on the other side. Yeah. So I don't want anybody to kind of think, oh, they just no. It's we've. We've been miserable. Yeah. Have y'all almost have y'all almost filed for divorce? I know y'all said y'all was gonna fight. Almost. Like physically <laughs> filled out the papers? No. No. Googled but it. Hope yeah, <laughs> definitely Googled it. Googled. Looked online. Yeah. Found a phone number. Hoping like, <laughs> will he drive by this time and don't let the garage up and come in? Yeah, you know, like yeah. those type of things. Yeah. For I, sure. I would for sure. and most of you'd be shocked that happens right now. I would create work just not to come home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I got something to do. I got something to do. I got something to do. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't want to come home, not knowing that my answer was home. Mm-hmm. And it's sad when, if he's in that same space, and I am because it has been in the same space where I'm saying, I hope he has a lot of work to do today, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. But I want somebody to understand that even yep. if you all are both in that same place of tired and ready to give up, it'll still work. Last but you got to be willing to work it. Have y'all ever gone through a separation? No. No. No, we, no, we, don't, no, we don't do that. Mm-mm. So, here, but here's why we don't do that. Because to me, it's all or none. Yeah, Absolutely. we're not. Yeah, I'm. I'm not playing that. Yeah. Yeah. I just had a relapse. Lord Jesus, <laughs> don't. This is my prayer to her. Don't give me a taste of a single life. Mm-hmm. If you open Pandora's box for me, and I get a chance to go back. I don't know if I'm coming back. Facts. Mm-hmm. You may lose me. Now, that's my personal testimony. Right. Me too. I'm not telling about it. Like, don't, yeah. yeah, don't, don't give me that. Don't let me do this. Don't let me do that. Well, we're gonna stay over here. And now, again, here's a disclaimer that we teach in our course. Some people may need that though. Right. Yeah. Some people may need it, but my greatest strength is I know my weakness. Yep. I don't need separation. No. Nah. No, here's separation. You go sit in that living room. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting in this bed. We'll come back and talk in a few minutes. And yeah. we yep. slept in the same oh, bed yeah. every night for almost 30 years yeah, unless night. he's out of town or I'm out of town, right. which that's probably only 1% of the time that yeah, we're not with me most together. Of the time. But I make sure every, that. It's yep. like you bothered, you're going to be bothered right, right down that pillow me. next to yep. But it, it also gives you a sense of how to talk to each other. Facts. And people don't, we give up too easy. Right. Nobody wants to talk to talk through anything right. like i oh you made me mad i give up let's get divorced what what are you what <laughs> oh you oh you stepped on my foot you made me i'm gonna divorce yeah i don't like the way you talk to me let's do i could have had a bad day i did yeah. something wrong yeah. we don't give people grace in season of their life that god hid from us but we want grace but we want it and most of us <laughs> they laugh at me when i say this but most of us become the victim of problems we created <laughs> <laughs> you created the problem. So you, know, you create now you the victim. You can't be the victim and the villain. Then come on yeah, now. You can't time. you can't do that all the time. <laughs> so that's what we try to do in the challenge. We try to make it, and it's not just marriage, it's relationships as a whole. So we say, okay, holistically, I went through a bad one. Mm-hmm. Let's make sure I'm healed. Mm-hmm. Cause that's one thing I try to we I try to make sure she do that with women, especially for ones that want to go into the next marriage. Okay, let's make sure you're healed yeah. first. Let's make sure you don't have triggers. And if you go into a new trigger, let me have a conversation with the man. Say, listen, now you heard her say yeah. she don't like this. Mm-hmm. If this is going to be a problem for mm-hmm. you, leave her alone. Yeah. Leave, leave her alone. If you, and for the man, listen, if you like stripper poles in the room, yeah. you need to tell her before she gets there, yeah. baby, I like stripper poles in the room, mm-hmm. and let's have the conversation. Yeah. And I say that to be funny and be humorous, but I'm saying we don't That's have true. those type of intimate conversations going into a new one. How we do that. And this stuff we didn't do. Man, I wish I had had a conversation yeah. with her early on in life about what I really want. And yeah. I didn't know what I was going to be. I didn't know I was going to be a pastor. Because by the time I started figuring it out, I was like, listen, now I know you done been around the world because a lot of girls, right? It's <laughs> like, I, my I list ain't that long. I don't, like I don't, don't know don't what. I can only <laughs> offer you this. Like, But if you teach me, you know, I work with It's like, I don't know how to. They get paid to do all that. Like, I don't. <laughs> oh, but. But that was a real you laugh, like, well, this is real com- She was like, you want me to do what? Like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> but I learned. What are you talking about? She get paid to do that. What are you talking about? Like, she would literally say this to me like, oh, wait a minute. Uh-uh, that ain't comfortable. What you mean ain't comfortable? <laughs> you said she get paid to do that? Right. Oh, no. She, no, she get paid to do this. Yeah. But what you talking about now? Jill used to, she said, my name ain't Jill. At all. Sorry. Let me, can, before we go, can I get y'all, inti- <laughs> I want to, I want to say, uh, I want to give you an intimate moment of something she did that that helped me and I pray this up somebody else 
So my life was different. She ain't perfect. She has error too, but mine's I was a little Thank more different. Me. I was a little more different. <laughs> so we're or we must have been married like six mm. years. Mm-hmm. About six, seven years. And um she said, I need you to do me a favor. Because it was more spiritual than me at the time. <laughs> she said, I need you to do me a favor. She says, I need you to go into that restroom. And every woman you've ever slept with, I don't care if you don't remember their name. Pray them out of your spirit. That's good. I was like, oh, shoot, that's easy. Let me go in here. I'm going to be in here 10 minutes. Man, it was an hour and a half later. I was in the bathroom crying. Not because of what she asked me to release, because of the people I damaged in my immature state. So now I spend the rest of my life preaching the gospel to try to make sure this never happens again. We teach classes to make sure this never happens again. Because, I listen, the only thing that's stopping me from becoming an old me is God's grace. Yep. Yeah. That's it. So that's why we teach these courses. That's why we offer this to say, hey, guys, we're real. We're a picture, a model of success. I guess that's what you want to call it. But we're still striving. Like, we're still working. Mm-hmm. Like, all right. All right, you becoming a new you now. Okay, now. okay. Right. You heard what she said, right? Yeah. She go, okay, now. Yeah. All right. Phaedra, okay. answer this. What made you do that? We wrap up. What made you decide to tell him to go in the room, uh, the bathroom, and pray that off? I began to see that there were things in you that you wanted me to compete with that I couldn't. You saw that. I I saw that. <laughs> Because what I'm giving you is not enough. So there's something else that you've been involved with. Someone else that you've been involved with. That I'm now in competition with, even though she's not even here. That's good. So I want you to go in there and, and figure that out, release that. Dang, that's because good. Because I, I yeah. can't, I will not spend the rest <sighs> of our lives trying yeah. to compete with however many other people it was when I'm just me. I want you to, um, oh, God, that's good. <laughs> it's the truth though God, I'm it's, to, I'm just, it, is, it, it is so true <laughs> I don't even know who One of y'all supposed to pray to the camera About <laughs> About one of those hey, issues Cause that was good I was like I was like, should she pray and tell people to what, Should you Whatever lay on y'all heart Talk to the camera Whatever y'all want to say Cause that was good Will, will you go ahead since you, since you in the vein right now I'll follow up after you. Yeah. <laughs> talk to the people. Whoever you got If you were in a wife coaching class right now, talk to talk the women. To Absolutely. I would definitely say, girl, you got this. Now let me give you the keys and strategies that I want you to apply starting today. Starting today. No matter what you see, no matter what you hear, know that you're on assignment and you can make it better. Start with yourself. Even if he's not willing to come to the class and he's not willing to read and he's not willing to change, that's not your focus. Your focus is on you. And once you begin to change and model a better behavior, he will begin to change. It's very difficult for a negative spirit to live in a positive atmosphere. But you have to begin to work on you. Stay positive no matter what it look like, sound like, tastes like. I already know what it's going to be. And what it's going to be is better because God loves me enough that he wants the best for me. So anything that I'm in connection with is going to be great because that's what God said. And I would probably say this to every man that's watching. And women, I'll give you a chance to listen into the locker room. Um, there's a statement in the Bible that Jesus asked the father the question, how long has he been this way? And I ask you that question, how long have you been that way? Whether you're depressed, whether you're happy. How long have you been that way? And what are you looking for? And what's going to satisfy you for the next level? It is your responsibility. If you're talking about dear future wifey, it is your responsibility. If you're looking for a future wife, you already need to be a present husband. You need to know already in your mind how you're going to make her better. You're going to have to know in your mind. You got to come up with a scheme, a strategy, a system to say, listen, for the next woman that crossed my path, the next one God brings my way, I'm going to make her better. Because what I have is an assignment as a king, I have an assignment. And that assignment is to make her better. So even if you're single saying, I need to make her better. If you're married saying, Pastor, I need to figure out how do I make her better. Let's take a deep dive. Let's figure out how do we detox? How do we heal? Because men heal differently than women. We heal on the inside. We have to talk through things in our own head, through our own idiosyncrasies, our frustrations. We punch holes in walls. We have to listen to toxic information of people who don't even have our purpose or assignments in life. So if I can tell you that, please put yourself in a a community of men 
that's trying to become better. This Dear Future Wifey is a community. And for the women, I will tell you, every strong woman, thank you for being patient. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your patience. Uh, I tell my wife, thank you for her patience. Um, because that little boy is going to grow up. Yes, he is. That little boy is going to get anointed. That boy that worked in that synagogue, Jesus is eventually going to die on the cross. Mm. He's going to become everything that you need if you can just have enough patience to deal with him. So don't give up just yet. Yeah. Don't, don't give up just yet. And I'm going to leave you in the words of my mother. The same boy she helped raise now pastors her. Mm. All because she didn't give up on me. The same man she could have easily walked away from is not just her pastor, her husband, her best friend, and now we're teaching courses together just to make you better. It can succeed. Yes, yeah. it can. But you know what? I'm sorry. It will succeed. It will succeed. Yeah. Thank you, Leterit, for the words. LT, the words. It will succeed. It will. Your next one will succeed. I don't care if the past one fail. The next one will succeed. <clears throat> it's not over. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. Listen, man, thank y'all so yeah, much for pouring. Um, this is the perfect episode right after celebrating the 4th of July, freedom. Mm. Ooh, uh, yeah, that's uh, good. Just, yes. just it's freedom. It's freedom, freedom. <laughs> yes. um, thank y'all. Thank y'all so thank much. You. Thank you for having us. Man, when I say y'all mess me up, I'm sitting up here. I'm like, <laughs> God, uh, Thank you for having us. When you, spoke, when you just said freedom, you know what I thought about? I don't even know if we as a people realize that we deserve to be happy in our relationship. Yes. Yeah, that's like, good. Who said that we have to struggle every day and that's the norm? I have yeah. to be sad. Yeah. We we date. We have a good time. Oh, we, we, oh, we, oh, we have a good like, time. Like you yeah. have a right to be happy. Yeah. And I can find that in one person. Yes. I don't have to have multiple relationships just to be happy. That's good. That is so, oh my God. See, I can keep going. This, yeah, yeah, man. man. This, 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 powerful, that's good. That's powerful. <laughs> We're going to have a link in the uh, description. Uh, for y'all to y'all got me in this different mood right now. I'm, I'm, I'm but, you, it's, but it's good, man. To me, it's yeah, it just, it just, it's, it just got me in rich. this thing where it's like because I understand the power of marriage, I understand right. the value of it, yeah. and so but while I continue to to yearn and thirst after that, it's like I look at that and I look at couples and I be like, see, y'all get it, y'all understand. Um, there's a better version of you that's coming. Oh, that's I already know. It. There, that's there's right. a version of you that will not make the same mistakes, the same errors that another woman is going to benefit from yeah, because you're better. Yep. But here's the key. God has to make her better mm -hmm. so she can handle you when you come because there's mm. gifts and there's calling and there's assignments and there's purpose in you and in others. And what you don't want to do is give your gift to somebody who's going to misuse it. God is not going to do that. Because we've been through too much hurt, too much pain. He says, no, you've chose wrong. I don't think people realize it's critical who you choose. It is. It's important in business. It's important in life. It will help make you or break you. Yeah. Just a simple choice yep. of who I want to love, who I decide to stay with. And please don't make marriage about sex. Right. Yep. Oh, right. let's see. We, we went right. into classes and courses. and <laughs> The marriage challenge in August. Link in bio. Make yeah. sure that y'all... Uh, click what is it? and join it. Net? What is it? Okay. What is it? Marriagekeys.net. Marriagekeys.net. <laughs> Marriagekeys.net. For those listening to us on audio, link going to be in the description. Make sure y'all check that out. Um, we're going to offer a discount for you. Good. We're going to offer a discount for those. See, that, what is it? American Express? <laughs> what? Was it never leave home never without? Leave home with oh, never yeah. leave home without it. <laughs> what well, never leave home, which means you're a part of the community. Right. Yeah. And since you're a part of the community, right. and we absolutely love LT, love what you're doing with this community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're gonna offer a discount to every one of your listeners. They say, listen, I just want to chime in. I want to figure it out. Yeah. Um. And our thing is, listen, we're gonna give you what we have. Yeah. And remember, this marriage is a thumbprint. It is. It's a thumbprint. It's not. It's. We're gonna give you principles and keys. You figure out how to open the door, how yeah. to use, how to do it. Because one wife, one thing, one wife is another, one yeah. husband is one. So we just, we we kind of do that. So even with a thousand, how many people it'll be, that's what we do. That's yeah. kind of who we are and what we do. <laughs> y'all give it up for, for the Johnsons, y'all. Give it up for my Lord homies. Lord have mercy. The Johnsons, y'all. Got me all emotional. All right. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, 
Slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted? Yep, you guessed it. Slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care, should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm Latarius R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Man, hey, we're at the end of this journey, season six, Miracles and Manifestation. Y'all know typically I do 21 episodes. I do 21 episodes um, number 21 is symbolic for restoration. And so after 21 episodes, I take a break so I can be restored. This season, I decided to do 33. Why? Is because it's miracles and manifestation. And our Lord and Savior um, died at the tender age of 33. And so to pay homage to my Lord and Savior, I decided to do 33 episodes in this powerful season of miracles and manifestation. And I know I've heard so many comments from you guys about how powerful, how transformative, how much you link, uh, glean wisdom and insight on your own personal journey through this season. And, you know, I just like to thank God for that. But here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey.
Dear future wifey, today is the last day of season six, Miracles and Manifestations. Wow. I truly believe it takes a miracle to meet one's purpose partner and make it to the altar. It truly takes divine submission and total surrender to our Lord and Savior to join in holy matrimony. Overcoming past relationship failures, fighting through insecurities, pushing past triggers, loving each other past unmet expectations. I believe the devil will fight us tooth and nail to prevent our union. Our covenant and collaborative purpose will bring many souls to the kingdom. Let's make the Lord proud. Dear Future Hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.